we've got roots. Just the day after I made that last video, I was checking out all the little cuttings in the tent and guess what I saw guys? One little tiny root creeping out to the edge of the cup on the Norino cutting, one of the three Norino cuttings and I couldn't be happier. Things are playing out beautifully. It's working out well and those cuttings are on their way to success. But first, let's just answer a question I got from David. All right, so this question comes from David Alishire, and I think it's important for this right now. I just want to address it right away. A lot of you probably have an opinion on this one way or the other, and for those of you who don't, let's just dive in. So here's this question. I only have a bazillion questions for you, smiley face, but I'll keep it to two this time. What is the grow light and tent setup that you have going? And is it okay for someone just starting out with the hobby? That's question one. Second, have you tried growing a fig tree in a large container with any success getting fruit? Love watching your vids, Mike. Well, thank you very much, David. That's awesome and I love hearing it, man. So let's start with the second question real quick and that is, have I ever grown figs that have fruited in a big container? And the answer to that is yes, but I wasn't quite sure where you were going with that question. Did you mean, was I growing that container indoors under lights through the winter and then got it to fruit that way? Or did you mean, was I growing it out here outside in a pot in the summertime and got fruit that way? I'm guessing it's the first one because the second one people are doing all over the world. But just to be thorough, yes, I've grown figs out here in my little nursery and I've gotten lots of good fruit off of them not as good a fruit as I've gotten planting them in the ground. Once I started planting them in the orchard and getting my first few fruits, I think it was two years ago, and then last year I got some more. I'm telling you, there's a world of difference from going from pots and then planting them in the ground. You, those roots have access to just a much wider array of minerals and nutrients that are in the soil that are just not in your potting soil. I'm sure you can grow nice figs in pots and you can get lots of good fruits, and I've done that here but it just doesn't compare to in-ground figs. As far as growing them indoors and getting fruit, yes. Now, it wasn't a big pot, but a lot of you guys know that when you root cuttings of figs, they are so eager to start putting on figs many times, they'll just start growing figs right off of the cutting. And it's always best to pluck those little guys off because they're not gonna usually amount to much while that cutting is trying to root and get established. But sometimes we leave them on and just see what happens. Now. On one particular occasion, I did leave some figs on a Calderona, which I now have planted out in my orchard, and I'm now very worried about because last winter, it died back to the ground, took months through the spring and summer to actually set up one tiny little stalk again, didn't do much last summer, and now it's died back again. So we'll see what happens, but that cutting when i first started it years ago inside my house under fluorescent lights it actually did fruit and i decided to leave the fruits on there and not only that i posted some pictures of it on the what for fig facebook group um this was like three or four years ago now so you'd have to go find it and you know see if you could find that one for yourself i'm not sure where exactly to go but i posted it on there and that Calderona actually grew a beautiful, deep purple fig. I think there might have been two of them on there. And I did let them fruit out all the way. They did fruit out and get completely ripened underneath that fluorescent bulb, those T8 fluorescent bulbs that I showed you in that last video. And it actually tasted really good. I'm sure there was no comparison to growing it in ground in an environment like Southern California but it was a ripe fig in a container in my house. It wasn't a big container. I think it was just a little, a little deli cup or a one gallon pot or something like that. But nevertheless, it was a container. So that should answer your first question. You can't grow them indoors. People do. If you want to fruit them out and get the best potential out of them, I'd say be prepared to have some really good lighting, something better than fluorescent tubes, like a really nice, well-rounded LED high up in the tent, cranked up nice and high and or maybe even a metal halide but those are kind of phasing out because they consume so much power and they produce so much heat but something like that might help you to get where you're trying to go if you're trying to fruit figs indoors through the winter or if you live in an area where the sun doesn't go too far down on the horizon but it's too cold to grow them outside you might be able to put them in a window i don't know maybe in florida or something like that in the winter and get them to fruit 
I, I just don't know. I don't have experience with that. Uh, but let's get on to your first question now. And that was about the grow tent and light setup. So as far as the grow tent and light, do you need either of them? Well, not the setup I have. You really don't need any high tech high money, high dollar deals here to get the job done. Let's go inside and take a look at what I've got just to show you, because that was your question. What exactly am I using? Some people just, they want to buy exactly what I'm using. And I just want to say ahead of time, you don't need it. And it can be a little more spendy, but let's go look at it. All right, guys, we're back and I've got some really cool things to show you. I'm pretty excited by what I found. Let's just kind of go over this tent lighting situation real quick just to answer some questions and then we're gonna check out some roots. All right, here we go. So I've showed you guys videos on this before in the past, but this is a Mars Hydro grow tent. It's three foot from side to side, three foot back to back. So a three by three grow tent. You can buy four by fours, you can buy two by fours, you can buy all different size grow tents. I just liked this size, I thought it, you know, it, it's got nine square foot of area inside of here to grow in. And I like the layout. Yes, I do have to reach back quite a bit, but it's really not that bad. I've got this camera set on the wide view so you can see everything, but I'm five foot 10 and I can lean forward and barely touch the back of that wall. If I have to get in there, sometimes I'll just put my hand on something and then I can go a little further, but it's a nice size grow tent. It's got this mylar surface here, so it reflects light. The reason the grow tents are so good, and you don't need this, but the reason the grow tents are so nice are because it reflects the light. So you get the most use out of the light. If you don't have some type of a wall around that light, you're going to lose a lot of the light and it's just going to go out beyond the tent and not get to your plants. And so if you're trying to conserve energy and you're trying to get the most of your light, a grow tent can be really helpful. You don't necessarily need a grow tent. You could build a little wall out of plywood or, or sheets. You could even use white sheets. I, I read some studies saying that white actually reflects better than this mylar. And so if I was ever going to build a room like this, something bigger, I would probably paint the walls white. But that's the tent I use. It's just, I'm not affiliated with this. I don't make anything off of this. <laughs> I'm just telling you, it's a Mars Hydro Grow Tent. It's a three by three setup. The light is a Vipar Spectra. Again, not affiliated. I don't make any money off of this. I do have links to them on Amazon in all of my, I think in all or most of my uh, videos. But these are really nice lights. I like them a lot. This is a, I believe a 150 watt light. This is the excess. Let's see if I can find it on there. All right, I had to put the camera down and get a little more accurate for you on this light. So this is the XS1000 Vipar Spectra. It's 150 watts total. And it does have a knob over here that you can turn up. So you can turn it all the way up. You can crank it down. If you have a watt meter, it'll actually tell you how many watts you're using. The thing I will say about these lights, these LEDs are so intense. Now, if you go to the website or to Amazon or something, research them, It'll say that this light is good for a two by two grow tent. That's, and then you need to have it hanging 18 inches off your plants. That's only accurate if you're growing very special plants, <laughs> but we're not growing that. We're growing figs. And so this light will cover such a much more massive area. I, I really believe honestly that I could take this light, put it in a four by four tent and it would do just as well. It would grow anything I wanted to very well in the bottom of this tent with the light raised all the way up and turned all the way up. It's only 150 watts. So the technology has come a long way, but you're going to pay for it. That light right there is 119 bucks right now. A year ago is 100 bucks. That's what inflation does to us. But there it is. 120 bucks will get you that light. I think the tent somewhere around 100 bucks or maybe 120 bucks, but you don't have to spend that money. Now, let me show you my other little setup before we get into these figs. So this is just a T8 bulb setup. I've got four bulbs in there. Each bulb is probably like five, six, seven bucks, something like that. Much cheaper. The fixture, I bought a nice fixture. You don't have to buy a nice fixture. You can buy the little two bulb fixtures that are like 20 bucks at the big box stores. Um, put two of them side by side and you can light up a pretty good area. Now under here, this is just a table. It's just a dining table right here. And I raised it up on some blocks and then just hung this light underneath it. You can see where I 
have it hanging on. Let's see if I can get there. Little chains right there. Uh, but you know, it's there's nothing special about any of this. The wall's white in the back. It'd be nice if those little bookshelves were white, but they're not. Doesn't really matter. But you can grow tons of plants. Before I ever got into that grow tent and the lighting, I was growing everything under this little area. I've probably got, I don't know, two and a half to three foot underneath here. It'd be nice if it was a little higher, but with the fluorescence, you have to keep them down lower, closer to the plants. Much cheaper setup, and it'll grow everything that you can grow in this tent. Now, having said all that, I want to say real quick to you guys, you absolutely don't even need a grow tent or a light or anything. In fact, if you've been watching for a while, I'll put a link to this video down below. A lot of you have seen it. I did a video, an entire setup where I grew these fig cuttings in the late winter, early spring out on my back porch with no light and it was still cold. I put them on a heat mat and as the weather warmed, I eventually transitioned them once they rooted out into the hoop house. Never had a single light bulb over top of them. And so that was my best success ever. I had a 100% success rate on that one. So you absolutely do not need any lighting if you're trying to root figs. You just have to wait a little bit until you get closer to spring and summer. I just want to put that out there so you don't, you don't think you have to spend money. You don't need to spend money on any of this. I'm just trying to help answer the question about what I've got set up here indoors through the winter, which makes it a little fun because then it gives you something to do through the winter, right? All right, so let's get to what you guys were really here for all along, and that is our little fig roots. So just the day after I posted that last video, I was in here looking around and, you know, I just pulled in some cups up out of here to take a look and see, and look what I saw on this Norino right here. So you can see this is one of them that leafed out and it's a fatter cutting and it started a little earlier than the rest. And check this out, guys. Out of nowhere, it caught my eye. I was turning this little cup around. You see it? Look at that. Little root popping out of there. And then just this morning, I noticed that little one right there. We've got roots, guys. We have got roots, and I couldn't be happier. Now, I thought that was it. I looked around, didn't see anything else. And then just this morning, I was pulling some of these bigger, fatter cuttings up just to take a look and see, and look at what I saw on this one. At first, I pulled it up, and I was looking around down at the bottom. Didn't see anything down there. Couldn't figure out what the problem was. And that's not even the right one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> this is the one, the Maroc 23. All right, I was holding this thing, looking around the bottom, because that's kind of where the fig is sitting down near the bottom. And all of a sudden it caught my eye up in this plastic right here. Look at that. Look at all that. We got roots out of the top of that cutting or up near the top of the cutting. Look at those things. Just beautiful roots. And now, you know, so, so this is working. This is absolutely working. And now I want to uh, make another good point. There was somebody on the YouTube channel came on, made a comment. I think the name is Kicking a Dead Dog or a dead cat or something like that. <laughs> anyway, their avatar is the face of a, a hound dog. But uh, the person said, you know, they were talking about how they grow these figs and the roots get down into the cup and the light gets to the roots and they're, they still grow massive and strong and white. And everybody says, oh, the roots should be covered and they should be in dark. I agree with this person. I, I have never had a problem at all. I get those big, massive white roots down in these cups and it doesn't matter if there's light shining right on them or not man they just keep growing like crazy they don't care if there's light if there's dark it don't matter i've never seen a difference in it actually it would be a good question to ask you guys have you ever seen a difference if you covered your cups or put them in dark or somehow put a a red solo cup over it so that light can't get to it have you had better results doing that because I just haven't. I, I put these things in here with clear cups so I can see the roots. The light hits them. They don't care. They just root like crazy and the roots love it. So that's been my experience with it. So there it is. We've seen some roots. Things are working out. You can see that we've got some growth coming out of these guys or more growth coming out of them. Everything's just rolling along smoothly. I'll come back when more has happened with these figs. I want to see 
things just start taking off. And I think we're going to, I don't know about the top of that BNR. It looks like it's starting to shrivel up right there. Those are notorious for being tough to root. That one's still got some green, but this little BNR has got a nice little green top on it. You know, everything's kind of doing its own thing. Oh, I just thought of something. I wanted to tell you guys one more thing right in here. Natasha, we were talking on uh, YouTube. Natasha from Enlightenment Gardening. Go check out her channel. I've mentioned her channel before. She sends the most fabulous cuttings. But look at this. There's your little uh, Bass's favorite fig. It's still, after a year in the fridge, doing absolutely beautiful. You can see those little buds swelling right there. And everything looks good. I have not seen roots yet. I'm hoping and I'm praying for roots on that guy, but I haven't seen roots. That's the bass's favorite. Now you sent me another smaller cutting of the bass's favorite. A part of it rotted, so I cut it off. It was just a little nub with one node right there. It's swelling, but I'm hoping to get something. I don't know if I will. That one's a little bit more of a long shot. And then the other one you sent me was this Nixon Peace Fig. And I just wanted to show it to you. It looks really good, strong, healthy, never shriveled up. You can see some of those buds are swelling down in there. I'm excited to see if that one starts rooting. I really want to see that one take off. So we'll see what happens. But I want to show you those figs because you were asking about that on my channel or your channel or one of the two. Anyway, if you guys haven't seen Enlight Enlightenment Gardening from uh, Phoenix, Arizona, go check it out. All right, guys. That's it for now. I hope you learned something. I do every time I get in here and show you guys something. But have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.